have you ever apologized to someone else for something that you really feel bad about, but then afterward you felt like the apology you offered just wasn't really fully received or accepted? And you might have been wondering, well, I really meant that apology. What did I do wrong or what went wrong? Hi, I'm Mary Morrissey. I'm the author of two best-selling books, No Less Than Greatness and Building a Field of Dreams, which became a PBS special. Now, we're all human beings. Not one of us is perfect. We sometimes make mistakes and we step on each other's toes sometimes. This is part of the human experience. Every single one of us at times, at one time or another, has done something or said something we wish we hadn't, or we made a commitment we didn't keep, or we made a promise or that we, we would do something and we didn't show up, or we said we'd keep secret and we didn't keep it secret. When this happens, and we, the best thing we can do is do our best to make things right. And apologizing is part of that process, apologizing to the person or the people that we may have affected by our actions. But how do you apologize in such a way that the person you're apologizing to can really receive it and that the relationship between the two of you will not only be repaired and restored, but actually possibly made better by that apology? Well, there's actually a five-step process for the perfect apology that came to me by way of a consultant that I was working with by the name of Pam Hendrickson. Now, when you do feel it's appropriate to apologize for something, this five-step formula that you can follow for apologizing in a way that repairs damage uh, and restores trust and reconnects relationships and actually can make that relationship stronger, I have found magic in this five-step formula. This process is effective for your personal relationships and anything you may feel you need to make amends for in your professional life as well. So here are the five steps. Number one, here's what happened. I promised you I would keep this secret, and I didn't. I said I'd be here at 7 o'clock, and I didn't show up till 7.45. Whatever it is, I promised you that project, and I didn't get it done at the time I said I would. Here's what happened. So you're just telling the fact of what happened. Step two, I take responsibility. Instead of saying, oh, it's because of this and the traffic and, the, that, and making, it, making some outside cause, at the end of the day, I said something was going to happen that I said I'd do. I didn't do it. And instead of blaming outside circumstances, when I just simply take responsibility, I said I'd show up at 7. I didn't get here till 7.45. I take responsibility for that. There's such a, a smooth thing that happens between people. It's like, oh, you're taking responsibility. You're not blaming the traffic or somebody else. So I take responsibility. Step three. So here's what I'm doing to fix that is that I'm gonna make sure that I get on that freeway earlier because I'm never sure about how much traffic it is. So next time I tell you I'm gonna come at seven o'clock, you can count on me being here at seven o'clock. I'm gonna get, get on that freeway 30 minutes earlier or whatever you already have pre-decided that you're gonna to do to fix that problem. I promised you I would keep confidentiality and I didn't do it. So here's what I'm already doing to fix it. I said I'd have that project done. I, I promised you would be here at eight o'clock this morning it's now 9.30 and I'm standing here and I thought maybe I could scramble and get it to, get it to you in the next 90 minutes. Not going to happen. I feel very badly about that. I take responsibility for that. So here's what I'm already doing to fix it. I've brought in three other people that are helping me get this done and everyone agrees that they think we can get it done by 4 o'clock. I know 4 o'clock is not 8 o'clock when I promised it to you. But that's what I'm already doing to fix it. So step three, you've said here's what happens. I take responsibility and here's what I'm already doing to fix it. And then step four is, and here's the system I put in place to make sure that doesn't happen again. So if I'm late, the system is I've already set my alarm in my calendar so that I leave 30 minutes earlier for every other appointment we've set up. So you can count on the fact that whatever time I tell you I'm going to get here, I'll be here on time or early. Here's a system I put in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. Here's a system I put in place to make sure no project is late again. So what I'm going to do before I make a commitment on the time that I agree my our projects will be delivered to you, I'm going to do better analyzation. And I've got two people who are going to help me analyze all the many things that have to happen to make sure that project is complete so that I'm not caught up surprised by the number of things that I didn't notice were going to ha have to happen before I could give you the completed project. I believe next time you're going to be able to count on me in a much stronger way to get that project to you on time because I've done better analyzation with some other help looking at all the many elements of that project so I can deliver it on time. So I'll use that system every time I give you a date of when I'm going to turn a project in. So again, you're using, here's the system that I'm putting in place to make sure that same mistake doesn't happen again. The other person goes, wow, 
not only do you care that that happened, you're going to do your best to make sure it never happens again. That feels good to the person who's receiving the apology. So to recap, step one, here's what happened. Step two, I take responsibility. Step three, here's what I've already done to try to make it right. Step four, here's the system I'm putting in place to make sure I don't make that same mistake again. This doesn't happen again. And step five, is there anything else I can do to make this right between us? There's just a breath of fresh air that comes with that. Not only have you told me what's gone on, not only have you taken responsibility, not only have you done your best to make it right, not only have you put a system in to try to make sure it can never happen again, now you ask me, is there anything else you can do to make this right? I feel heard, I feel recognized, I feel cared about. And watch not only the reparation of a relationship when we apologize this way, watch the fusing of a connection that can happen between two people who treat each other with respect and dignity and honor. You can use this with your kids. You can use this with your spouse. You can use this with friends, colleagues, somebody you run into in the grocery store. I'm going to make sure I'm looking more closely where I'm going so I don't bang into you with that card again. We all need to apologize at times. Here's how we can create an apology that not only mends fences, but builds bridges. So now that you know the five-step formula for the perfect apology, so when you feel it's appropriate to apologize for something, leave just one of those steps out, you're going to run the risk that the person you're apologizing to may feel that you didn't really understand the ramifications of your actions, so you didn't really care about them enough. But when you make sure to cover all of these five points when apologizing, you're going to quickly find that that apology is received and appreciated Trust is restored, and you both can move forward. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please share it. Then go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done that. So here's a question for you. What's an insight or a breakthrough that opened up for you as a result of watching this video? So go ahead and share your thoughts with me in the comment section below, because I'd love to hear from you. I want to thank you for watching. I hope to see you real soon. Bye for now.